Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Mzuiko Digital ED 90mm f3.5 Macro IS Pro. That is a very long-winded name, so I think I'm just going to call it the 90mm f3.5. Just before I get into the review, I just want to give a quick disclaimer and say that Olympus or M System kindly sent out the 90mm to me. They haven't paid me or anything, so I can basically say what I want. So yeah, let's get into the review. So to begin the review, we'll quickly talk about the specs of the lens. So I believe this is the first 90mm lens that goes to two times magnification that has autofocus. So as the name suggests, this is a 90mm lens and that is 180mm full frame equivalent. It goes to f3.5 at one to one magnification. And when you go into two times magnification, it actually goes to f5, which isn't a problem for me because when you're doing super macro, I'm gonna be using apertures around f10, f11 anyway. The lens goes all the way from infinity to two times magnification, which is quite impressive. So on the side of the lens here, we've got a switch and this goes from 0.25 meters to infinity. Then it goes to 0.25 to 0.5 meters. And then it goes to S macro and S macro is two to one magnification. So the next button on the lens, we've got the image stabilization. Most of the time I keep this on because when you're doing close-up macro photos, the image stabilization helps a lot, especially when getting focus brackets and focus stacks. And if you pair this lens with a body that has inbuilt image stabilization, such as the OM-1 or the OM-1 Mark II, then you'll get up to seven stops of image stabilization. Now the next button on the lens, we've got a programmable button. So when you press it normally, it doesn't do anything. But if you go in your camera, you can program that button to do um, any sort of function. For example, if you wanna quickly switch to focus bracketing, I know a lot of people program to the buttons here on the camera, but you might wanna do it on the lens so you don't have to actually take your hand off the camera or lens at all. And quite a handy feature, which I didn't really realize at the time when I was setting it out, is that you've got a manual focus clutch here. And what this does is allows you to quickly change your magnification. And with this manual focus clutch, as you can see, you don't have to turn it very far to go all the way from infinity to two times magnification. So this is very good for quickly switching magnification when you're out in the field. And the good thing about this is that even if you use an autofocus, it overrides that. And when you pop it back in, it will be how your lens left off. So now let's talk about the weight and size of this lens. As you can see, it's quite a big lens. It's like the size of my head. Um, and when you compare it to the 60 millimeter, it's actually pretty big. For its size, I thought it was gonna be quite heavy. And then when I got my hands on it and actually, you know, picked it up, I was quite surprised. I thought it'd be, you know, similar to quite a heavy full frame lens because it looks like one, but it's actually pretty light. And if you wanna know the exact size of this, it's 136 millimeters by 69.8 millimeters. And the weight of it is 453 grams. And you might think because the lens is big and it's really light that the build quality isn't great, but it's actually surprised me. It does feel a little plasticky, but honestly, it does feel quite rigid and quite well built. And another thing to mention is that this lens is also dust, splash and freeze proof. So when I was testing this lens, I was mainly using it down in Cornwall and I was shooting in the sand dunes most days. And somehow after two weeks of shooting in sand dunes and getting my camera all sandy, I don't have any sand in my camera or focus ring or anything like that. One thing I was really impressed with when out in the field with this lens is the working distance. So I did some measurements at one to one and then at two to one to see what the working distance was at those magnifications. And at one to one, I measured 93 millimeters. Whereas the 60 millimeter has a working distance of 85 millimeters at one to one. So that's about a centimeter of difference between the lenses there. And at two to one on the 90 millimeter, the working distance was 70 millimeter. Whereas the 60 millimeter with the Rainox on, which is equivalent to about 2.5 times magnification, that was 40 millimeter. So a whole three centimeters difference between those. 
So the reason that a bigger working distance is a good thing is because when I'm out in the field shooting live subjects, I don't want to get very close to them. The closer I get, the more chance I have of the insect or bug, whatever, getting scared and running away, flying away. So another great thing about this lens is that it has autofocus. I've actually never used autofocus and I still don't use autofocus. So you might be thinking, why is that a good thing? And it's a good thing because in order to use focus bracketing and focus stacking on these OM system cameras, you need to have a lens that has autofocus. If it's a manual lens and doesn't have uh, autofocus at all, then you won't be able to use these features. And focus bracketing is very useful on this lens when shooting at two times magnification. The reason for that is because the focal plane is going to be very thin at two times magnification, um, even when using apertures like f10, f11. So if I want to get more of my subjects in focus, I'm going to have to bracket those frames across the subject and get more focal planes to stack later on. And of course, you can do manual focus bracketing where you physically move the camera, but having the the camera's focus bracketing feature enabled is a lot less stress out in the field than having to worry about moving your camera back and forth while framing your subject nicely. Another thing that's cool about this lens is that it's compatible with the MC14 and MC20 converters. Now I don't have any of these, but what they do is give your lens more magnification. Uh, I'm pretty sure the MC20 takes your this 90mm lens at two times magnification up to four times magnification. Um, and although I don't have any of these, I have tried using a Rainox, which is a similar sort of product where it takes your lens to a higher magnification. And I must say it's extremely hard to use out in the field. If you are going to use an MC14 or MC20, I'd highly suggest doing it in the studio in a controlled environment or just use a tripod. You could probably get away with it in the field as long as your subject's still and using a tripod because handheld is extremely difficult. A lot of you are probably wondering what's the sharpness like on this lens. I'd say it's on par with the 60mm if not better. It's hard to tell. I haven't really uh, nitpicked and pixel peeped at the sharpness too much but I have been shooting a lot of the same stuff that I would shoot with the 60 millimeter. And I'd say it feels a little bit sharper, if not the same. Like most lenses, when you use them at the lowest aperture, uh, on this lens, it is f3.5. You'll get a bit of vignette in and a bit of softness. And when I'm doing macro, I'm generally using f8 or f5.6 at my lowest. So it's not really a problem for me. But if you're someone that does stuff without flash and you like the creamy backgrounds, then f3.5 is still great. It's hard to notice any vignette in when you're out in the field. For example, I shot a butterfly a few weeks ago out in the field with no flash and the sharpness still looked great. Now, how much does a lens like this cost? It comes at a price of 1,299 great British pounds, which is about 1,600 odd dollars. So ignoring the price of this lens, would I recommend it? And I'd say yes, definitely. From the autofocus, the image stabilization, the manual focus clutch, the working distance, it's all great. And while you can get similar results with the 60 millimeter, this lens is just a lot easier to use in the field. So who is this lens for? And I'd say this lens is for people who are very serious about macro and do a lot of macro. I think if you're a photographer who does just a little bit of macro and maybe does a bit of landscape and other stuff, it'd be a bit of a waste to spend £1,299 on a lens. But if you're proper serious about macro, this lens pretty much does it all. So if you want to check out this lens, I'll leave a link in the description. And that link is an affiliate link. So if you buy the lens through that link, then I'll get a little bit of money at no extra cost for you. And it will help support the channel and I can make more videos for you guys. If you want to see this lens out in the field, I've made quite a few videos, so just go on my channel and have a look at those. But with all that said and done, I'm going to end today's video here, so make sure to leave a like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.